the impossible scenario that threatens retirees. I, <laughs> I saw this article and I said, holy crap, is this guy in my head? All right, it's fantastic. I don't know who this guy is. David Machaya. Machia? Machaya? I'm from Maine. We don't know how to pronounce words. And if you're from Maine and you disagree, I'm sorry. But you're so offended. No one from Maine is offended. No one from Maine is. Now, you might be offended from Boston because you're like, oh, I'm a highfalutin. Uh, what's the rich place? Smith College? Uh, Harvard? There's another like rich place places. Oh, how dare you? I need my tea and crumpets. All right, so this guy... This is nuts, man. I'm going to go down to here. I'm going to just show you right here where he starts. In 1989, Japan's economy was on a tear. That year, Japanese real estate peaked in value, ascending to a value of 139000 per square foot. The 215-acre Tokyo Ginza district had a market value that exceeded 106 million acres that comprises the state of California. The 215 Tokyo Ginza district had was worth more than the whole entire real estate of the state of California. In December uh, 1989, the Nikkei 225 reached its all-time high of 39,000. And most people would have judged it impossible for the events that fall in Japan to occur. You know what happened. The Nikkei crashed and never came back. In 2012, another tough year for the Japanese economy. And 23 years after it peaked, the Nikkei stood at 8596, 30,000 points below its 1989 high. Now, 33 years later, it's still 12,000 in the red. So it's gone from 8596 to, what's that, 22, uh, wait, 30, where was it at? 39,000? Yeah. So it's at 27,000. So it's gone from 8596 to 27,000. It's still 12,000 points in the red. Prices of other asset classes uh, also crashed. Uh, Japanese primate real estate lost 99% of its value. Japan's world's leading personal savings account crashed. Signa those signature U.S. assets were sold at an average of 70% loss. So signature, remember the Japanese bought the Rockefeller Center? Uh, Sony, which before was the world's most valuable company, it no longer was. Instead, it lost market share to new competitors like Apple and Samsung. In fact, in 2012 alone, Sony, Sharp, and Panasonic lost a combined market cap of $20 billion. Would you agree that Japan no longer seems like a threat to, overall, to, take, uh, the, to overtake the U.S. economy? Let's see. Uh, what are some of the other examples of impossible outcomes? In 19, 17 eurozone, eurozone countries linked their economies in a single currency and interest rates, the economist who designed this said it would be impossible that there be a, a, a euro currency crisis. Yet there was. Uh, there, let's see. Uh, he t I also root for the New England Patriots. Recall that Super Bowl 51, uh, the, the, with three minutes left, the Pats were down by 28 to 3, and yet the Patriots came back and won. I also root for the Red Sox. On September 9th, 2011, there was a 99.6 probability that the Red Sox would make the playoffs, and they did not. I remember actually going to a game. Me and my man Rich, we went to saw the Red Sox play. I think it was the Spankies, and, uh, and we lost. We lost, like, oh, I think we lost a week because I played for the Red Sox. The whole month of September, we lost, like, I don't know, 26 out of 29 games, and we didn't make the playoffs. Uh, he doesn't say about the Red Sox, too, that we don't forget we were down three games to none with Mariona Rivera on the mound. And we came back, because I play, to win not only the ALCS, the World Series. Three games and none against the Spankies with Mariano Rivera on the mound. That guy, you know, he's only, he's like my size, but he's not, he's skinnier than me. And yet he couldn't hit that guy. It's crazy. All right. Um, so let's keep going. It's, easily, it's easy to be seduced by the events of the recent past. A 13-year bull market will do that. Uh, but most recently, my Japan fixation was ignited when the NASDAQ entered correction territory. It was further stimulated by the recent minutes of the Federal Open Market Committee, which revealed that the Fed is considering reversing its unprecedented money printing strategy, a QE, and substituting it with QT, quantitative tightening. After breathlessly expanding its balance sheet to almost $9 trillion, the Fed's strategy is about to shift in reverse. I'm worried because I cannot forget 1989. In 1989, he talks about the biggest companies 
and the, uh, the the eight of the ten biggest banks in the world are Japanese. I can't pronounce that. Mitsubishi Bank, Industrial Bank, Tokei, something else, something else. And then he comes back here to say, now what's going on? We come down here. Industrial Commerce Bank of China, China Construction Bank, Bank of China, China Development Bank, Postal Sa I mean, he's sensing some eerie similarities. My advice to financial advisors to build safeguards, especially for your retiree clients, many who will be financially impaired for life should the impossible scenario strike. I, I cannot agree more, man. Um, let's just see some comments. I think I left a comment on here. Hold on, just double check. Uh, my man John says, hopefully advisors to convince their clients to allocate more conservatively in preparation uh, for that. I can say those I advise are concerned, but are allocated not so heavily in the U.S. or any stocks. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, I also call the dominance of Japan in the 80s. The market's inability to recover is a lesson to all investment advisors. We aren't unique. I, I completely agree with that. Just we're not. Look, man, we were made by divine intervention. That doesn't mean it's perpetual. That's all there is to it. Uh, but at least we have bonds to buffer the blow of a permanently impaired stock market. If that happens, I 100% man. I, uh, you don't like bonds. I like them now. Heck yeah. Like I don't own any myself, but you should, if you're about ready to retire. Uh, there's no question that there are a host of catastrophic scenarios, but while it may sound comforting to say we can prepare for them by investing more conservatively is far from clear that what that actually means. Uh, how would those, see, this is what I tell you, man, people just, they don't get this. I don't, I, I don't know what else I can do. I don't know what else I can do. He said, how would those bonds or bond holdings fare in a catastrophic inflationary environment? Does anyone really believe annuities would hold up in a catastrophic investment environment? After all, insurance company can't manufacture money. I, I, okay, so if we look at Japan, your fixed income freaking did fine. I mean, you, you ultimately it didn't do enough. You ran out of money if you're taking 5% out, 4% doesn't matter. But fixed income actually was the buffer you needed 100%. It, I, there's no, it's not debatable. In deflationary times, fixed income is wonderful. In high inflationary times, there's no evidence that bonds get crushed. There isn't any. And we, the way we know that is we look from 66 to 82 and just simply look at what happened to various bond funds out there. They did, I mean, they, again, I said this a thousand times. They didn't make money, but they didn't get smoked. They did not. Some, some he posted saying, uh, stocks are a hedge against inflation. I said, uh, they were from 66 to 82? Because that's the only evidence of mass inflation we have. We don't have any other evidence of that, other than like a war time. And then it's just all, you know, all bets are off because it's a command and control economy. And I can't remember what he said, but he says, oh, in the long term, I said, what's, oh, that's what he said. He goes, in the long term, stocks are a hedge against inflation. I said, 66 to 82, that wasn't long enough for you? Because stocks were not a hedge against inflation. They just weren't. And stocks got smoked in 73, 74, 77, uh, some of that. Bonds, they did not get smoked. They just did not. I mean, again, you lost purchasing power, 100%. But you didn't get decimated like you did stocks, 100%. So, the, again, the, I just can't stop. I don't understand why people can't get this. In inflationary times, we don't know the evidence that stocks are hedged. We just don't. There isn't any to say stocks are hedged against inflation. I mean, there isn't any. Now, you could say from 19, I don't know, 82 to 2000, what's that, 2000? Yeah, I guess 82 to 2000. You can say whatever you want. Uh, there's times when stocks have been a hedge against inflation, but there's also times when stocks have not. I mean, just look from 1929 to 19, I think it's 54 is when he got back to even with stocks. That wasn't a hedge against inflation. It just wasn't. It's just it's fr freaking silly to say stocks aren't a hedge against inflation. They're just not. doesn't mean they can't be. It just means it's silly to say inflation, stocks. That's our hedge. That's dumb. Don't say that. And on the other side of that, to say bonds get smoked in inflation, well, just where's the evidence of that? Yes, if you bought a 10-year treasury in 1970, you got smoked. I grant you that. But no one's buying a specific 10-year treasury. I mean, you're buying a fund that's buying a hodgepodge of them, I grant you, but you are not putting all your money in one basket. That's diversification. You're buying mutual funds, which contains a hodgepodge of bonds. That's the way you do it. And there's no evidence that bonds got smoked. There isn't any. Again, you didn't make any money, but you did not get smoked. It just didn't. Yet you got smoked 1929, 1954, 2000, 2012. You got smoked in both those times. Japan got smoked 1990 uh, to 2013. Bonds performed just what you would thought. So during inflationary times, bonds did not get smoked the way people think. The only evidence we have is a 16-year time frame in the United States. It just did not happen the way people think. And I'm saying bond mutual funds or ETFs, but they didn't have ETFs back then. 
During deflationary times in the 30s in the U.S., in the 1990s, and going into the 2000s in the aughts in Japan, bonds did fine. Again, you didn't make money. You didn't make huge money, but you did not get smoked. I will gamble any day of the week and saying, okay, that didn't happen, and that did happen. I'm going to go with the thing that says uh, bonds did not get smoked, and they did do better during deflationary time, but they did not get smoked during inflation. Stocks get, got smoked during deflation. Japan, 1930s in America, and they got smoked 1966 and 19, 1982. Thus, I will go with having some bonds in my portfolio as a protection for sure. All right, let's keep going here because I, I thought I must, I thought I put my own, I thought I put it up. Uh, they're catastrophic events that create a scenario where nothing matters except farmland, guns, and animals. Yeah, and so, don't forget, I, 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 no, all that stuff is weird. But uh, uh, this guy says, uh, what's to stop an insurance company from uh, paying its annuity in a catastrophic inflation? What would be the alternative there, David? What, what, literally, what's the alternative? Yes, aliens could come and smoke us all. You know what I'm saying? So what are you going to do instead? You're going to invest. Yeah, he even says a nuclear attack. If that happens, all this stuff in the world, it doesn't matter. So why, just why do that to yourself? Say, so, well, bonds in a hyperinflationary market, bonds will help. Well, stocks won't either. Stocks won't. Cash won't. Just look at Venezuela. Uh, here's my man, Ron. This important article. I share your views, especially as they relate to baby boomers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ron does not like target date funds. Um, uh, yeah, I don't. All right, then I say uh, Richard Koo's book. The whole, I did say something. Uh, Richard Koo's book about the Japan balance sheet recession, nothing the BOJ could have could do regarding interest rates matter because borrowing stopped. Interestingly enough, he refers to mark-to-market accounting, too. On a side note, investors in Japan bonds fared a hell of a lot better in 1990 to 2012 than equity investors, 100%. Um, so then this guy says, if you come to Japan, no growth or contraction accompanied by deflation, a substantial U.S. Yeah, exactly. My man, Stephen Smith gets it. Yep, exactly right. If we become a Japan, no growth or contraction accompanied by deflation, a substantial U.S. Treasury bond sleeve in the portfolio will serve us nicely. 100%. Uh, as I read you, I contemplate the apostle scenarios. And first, China becomes a new Japan. The second, we become the new Japan. Um, all right. So there we go. Um, I'm not sure how to think about China, except that it's a much different culture, far more aggressive and hyper-aggressive player. I sometimes feel that the bubble of all bubbles will burst and create a global financial contagion. I wonder if the present course won't simply continue. Yeah, we don't know. Um, I, I, look, you got to do what you got to do. I just It's weird seeing some of these comments and saying, ah, inflation is going to eat bonds. Thus, I'm not going to have bonds. Or, ah, uh, stocks are the hedge against inflation. I, I just don't understand it, man. I don't get it. Bitcoin is a hedge against inflation. Protect the downside, my friends. Protect, protect, protect. Love your thoughts. We'll see ya.